Okay, hello. How's it going, everyone? Um, so I'm Sevish. I make different kinds of electronic music. So I wanted to talk about a technique today that I've used in a lot of my music. And um, I, uh, I think it's about time to kind of show what it is. Uh, so it's, a, it's an easy one. It is microtonal, but a, it's beginner level. Um, I've also got a playlist, which I've linked in the description. So this uh, the technique is called veraplaning. So there is a playlist that you can check out later and all of these songs use that technique and it maybe it was obvious, maybe it wasn't. Maybe you can figure that out after I explain what, what this thing is because um, this is not really a known, sorry that sound is my dog ruffling around. Um, it's not really a known, it was probably a known technique but I've never heard a name for it. So uh, Lumi Pucker then helped me come up with that veraplaning. So I'm going to show it off today. But before we can talk about that, let's have a look at what is uh, planing, because that will help explain veraplaning a bit later on. So planing is, um, uh, this is about parallel harmony. So the idea is we can, we can create a chord progression, let's say, and, um, but we're going to, one chord, we're going to have one quality of chord, for example, a major chord, right? So I could play, and I've got, got piano tech set up here, I can actually play some bits if you like. But, you know, for example, if I were to do like a G major, let's just say I had all my chords being major, but I just moved them onto a different route. So I could play like. Oh, well, if I could miss, if I could not misplay it. But you know what I mean? Let's say my chord progression went like G major and then D major and then uh, D sharp major and then F major and then that repeated. Right. But they're all the same quality of chord. So that's planing. Right. That's parallel harmony. So I'm going to demonstrate how you can do that really easily in um, Bitwig. Um, now it should be possible in other software as well. Right. But I've got the multi note uh, MIDI effect in Bitwig. Now I think in Ableton it's called chord, something like that. And then there might be similar things in like FL Studio or whatever. I, I don't really know. But the example I just played with the major chords. Here's how we would do it. So multi note, what this does is this listens for your MIDI note message. So I press like a, a C or something. And then what it does is it will add other notes on top of that. And so I press one note, but I hear a chord. So that major chord, um, the, the synth I've got here, Piano Tech, by default, this is tuned to 12 tone equal temperament. So each MIDI step here corresponds to one semitone heard from the synth plugin. So a uh, major chord is formed of the root and then a major third and then the uh, perfect fifth. So in terms of semitones for the major third, that's four semitones up from the root. And then for the fifth is seven semitones up for the root. I know this is all really basic stuff for a lot of you right now, but it is gonna, this is like the grounding that's gonna get us to veraplaning later on. But with this setup, I can now press one single note on my thing and I can hear a chord, right? So far, so good. Now, this does get used in a lot of music. Like if I do, um, let's say I did like a minor chord and then I've got house music, right? Or, you know, if I were to do something like, um, if I were to like make something a bit rich and colorful and luscious, uh, and imagine I didn't have a piano, but imagine this was like a nice pad sound. I've got like a jungle, old school rave, all that kind of thing. So I'm trying to bring this technique into styles of music you might have heard. Anyway, that's planing. Problem with it is it can be a bit boring because you've literally got that one same quality of chord that you're just moving to different routes, you know? It's exactly the same thing. Um, just yeah, copied and pasted. So veraplaning is a technique where we're going to use unequal tunings and we're going to use exactly this setup here with a multi note or chord, whatever it's called. And then we're going to get different qualities of chords. And that's a bit more dramatic because there's more variation and um, you can just kind of throw different tunings in and try this technique and you can discover a whole bunch of uh, interesting things. And I'm actually going to show you a couple of examples today. 
we're going to start with Blackwood, which I think is like the best one for, well, I've tried with a few and I love the results you can get from Blackwood. So I thought I would start there and then I'll try another one. And then maybe uh, if anyone has any suggestions, we could try that. There's also a lot of tunings that don't work very well, for planing. So it's not a one size fits all approach. And um, but the only way to find out really is to is to give it a go. Eh? So we're going to use an unequal scale. So that's different from the default tuning that I had the 12 equal before. So what is Blackwood? Well, this is a scale that is un it's unequal because it has large steps and it has small steps. It has 10 steps total. Um, and it kind of alternates between large and small, large and small, large and small. So it goes like this. So the 10 notes, and we're going to go large, small, like this, alternating. Now, what's interesting about that, uh, this tuning, is you can actually play those familiar triads in Blackwood, because we were just talking about major and minor triads a minute ago. Well, on let's say I pick one of those notes as my root. Um, I can form a triad on that root that will be either major or minor. Let's say I pick a root and I form the triad and that's a major chord. So I go up one step and I use that as the new root for the new triad. That one's gonna be minor. And then go up again, that's gonna be major, minor, major, minor, major, minor. It kind of repeats like that, which is kind of a cool thing. And you never hit a diminished chord with Blackwood. But, and that makes it very different from uh, like diatonic music where you expect that diminished chord that gives you that tension that wants to resolve to the tonic or wants to resolve elsewhere. Uh, Blackwood doesn't have that. For better or worse, you can actually kind of do lots of cool things with it that you can't do it in the kind of diatonic kind of uh, tonal framework. So that's a cool little thing. Um, in order to get this Blackwood tuning into our synthesizer, and I'm using Piano Tech today, it's the wrong tab. So I'm going to go over to Scale Workshop and um and i'm going to start using this so this is a free little web app that you can use to generate tuning files that you can load into your synthesizers and uh, the links up there it's sevish.com slash scale workshop and i should probably put a link to that in the description later on in any case i'm going to click new scale equal temperament and this gives me a little box where i can enter my steps now remember we had large and small alternating we've got 10. So I'm going to do that by, uh, we're going to use 15 tone equal temperament as our scale. It's our tuning. Uh, and the scale is going to be black with 10. Oops, put too many spaces in there. So I've put that in as 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. And that's told me that's 15 equal divisions. And that's right. If you add all of these, I you get 15. It's a funny little thing. And I click OK. And here we go. I've got myself a nice little tuning. And I can export this into Piano Tech by simply clicking this SCL button because um, Pianotech takes these SCL files, so that's the one I need here. Other ones might be like the B1 tune or something else, but there's a, I've got other videos about that, so I'm not going to go into that today. What else can we see? Let's, uh, let's actually kind of demo what I was talking about a minute ago. So I said that you could have um, on different routes. So let's say I have my route, and then I go three steps up. Oh, one, two, three. Okay, so on this route, I can form a major triad because I can go up another three steps from here. Right, and I've got my major triad. And you can see that visually on the screen how they're three steps apart. So I can move that shape up, but you're going to get a different quality of chord. So there's our minor chord, right? Major, minor major minor so you get the um you get you get the the gist of it i guess but the important thing is the shape stays the same and that's very useful for us because we're working with midi anyway i've uh, i've belabored that point quite long so um oh where's my uh gotta do a bit of file management to get that file in the right place and i didn't prepare for that so just bear with me then finding my tunings folder there it is. Let's drop that here. Yeah, that worked. I'm just going to quickly rename it to Blackwood 10 1582. Okay, so over here we're going to go back into the door now where all the exciting things happen. So I've got my multi note we talked about before. So you're going to delete that. Let's get a fresh one. Freshly un 
untainted by the uh, stuff we were doing before. So on my piano tech, I've already loaded up the advanced tuning panel. If you've not seen it, there's this little m moo. Is it moo or is it mew? Go with moo. Uh, so temperament and uh, Scala file you can load one up. And then of course it puts it on the other screen for some reason. And then, where did it, where did it go? oh, here it is, Blackwood 10, 1582. So I'll open that up. Now we've got a new tune here. Oh, I just need to swap that from string tension over to full rebuild. Funny little thing with piano tech, but you get better quality. You put it on full rebuild. Pardon me. Okay, so that same uh, little triad that I made over on Scale Workshop a moment ago, I'm going to do that right here. So we want to keep our zero because that zero steps away from the root, which means we're letting the root be heard. And then for the next one, we want three steps. Now in Blackwood 10, three scale degrees is going to get you either a major third or a minor third. And that depends on where in the um, what root you've started on. Okay, And then the plus six. You can see where we can go with this. We've got a lot more room to kind of expand and do bigger chords and stuff like that. So, uh, where was I? All right, I've got my piano here, my little keyboard controller. Here we go. Right, now that chord sounds slightly out of tune. Blackwood sounds slightly out of tune, but that's why you can do these cool things with it, because it's out of tune in like a really cool way. But you get used to it, and it doesn't sound amazing on piano, but it sounds great with like synthesizers and stuff. Anyway, forget that. Check this out. Does that sound a bit familiar, actually? Some of you have heard a few of my music before. Right, but all I'm doing here, I know you can't see because I don't have a camera on this machine, right? But all I'm doing is pressing a single key, but I'm hearing a chord. And then the different, different keys I press, I'm getting different chords. I know I've said this over and over again, but like, that's, that's the amazing thing. It's just like so quick to recall down um, parts like this and then to to use that to like get ideas down to start building up a track and like we can extend these chords as well so if I add a new one and do nine steps so that's three above that six that six is our perfect fifth and then so three above that is a third above that so we've got like a seventh in terms of diatonic naming even though this tuning does not work diatonic logic at all but I'm talking about the quality of the chord so I've got like a major seventh chord there and a minor seventh chord there, and you can keep stacking these. I think they do get silly though. Maybe someone can answer for this for me another another time. But if you, in Blackwood, if you start doing these big ones, these big chords, they um, there's something weird. I think it's to do with the, there being two different circle of fifths, but it starts to be ambiguous what the chord is. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me turn. I've gone a bit overboard already. What I like about Blackwood is there's a really kind of satisfying downwards motion from this one. That's just very compelling to me. So yeah, cool little thing. Um, yeah, I was saying a minute ago about how Blackwood just kind of sounds weird if you keep on stacking these too far. The, I'm going to keep going a bit more. The, the, Anyway, if, if I can't demonstrate it here on this call, someone please give it a try and um, let me know if you can recreate what I'm, what I'm talking about. But there's like ambiguity when you record this down and you start uh, changing the voicings, like you move certain notes up and down. You know, what, I'll show you in a minute. We'll just do it in a minute. It's fine. Those like really high notes now are getting a bit cloudy. just yeah, starts to clash. But yeah, it's a cool little thing, right? I think Blackwood is one of the best for this. So you want to hear a track where I've actually used this very tuning and this very technique, that would be um, so thankful. Oh, I also did that with Freethy because that's also very plain with Blackwood. Um, and there's another one that I've started working on this week. Same thing. So if you, if you had noticed any kind of similarities in those tracks or something, this is the technique that I'm trying to demonstrate today, and it's like so simple. 
but um yeah so uh i'm gonna i'm gonna do another and um i'm not checking chat yet but we'll, I'll, I'll come and say hello to chat in a minute but i, I see you there i'm glad to have you here all so, right let's have a look at semaphore semaphore is an interesting little tuning i can't actually remember how it's made I've got zen harmonic wiki here so it can tell me some of the things what's interesting about semaphore is it's a nine scale um well um it can be more but i find that the nine note scale um fairer planes very well but the um the larger ones don't and and generally the bigger the scale like if you're using an mos scale and you're going out to the larger um the larger versions um the fairer planing tends towards uh, becoming more and more equal so you want to do this with small unequal scales that's the whole thing that i'm trying to get across here so semaphore is it sounds really cool um i've used this in a bunch of tracks well barbados but it's like the same shape but slightly different sizes of notes so for me it's the same thing godzilla i don't know why they have these names um but you've got to love the name uh yeah i'm going to create this by which, which tunings can do this uh, let's grab that to scale workshop so new equal temperament i just paste that in there so it already knows i want 19 equal so we, we go in 19 equal for this one and um yeah so we've got large steps and small steps again now we're going to have to do some discovery together because i can't remember exactly what how many degrees anything is but an uh, interesting thing with scale workshop now is you can go onto the analysis tab and you can um see what is available on every route so uh, i'm going to put this over to sense because i can understand sense and that's a one percent of a semitone so 1200 is 12 semitones is one octave in case you didn't know so from this route i can get so i can get let's check out the fifths first because i want to i want to keep trying to relate this back to triads triadic harmony because um we started there and let's just do more flavors of that so from this route i can get a perfect fifth so that's good so i could have a triad and then what thirds do i have available well on this degree i can get um i can get a third there but if i start from this route again i've got that um fifth there then i get a different kind of third on that degree like a very very flat minor third let's call that like ultra minor or something um so if i use those degrees unfortunately um the indexing is off for my thought process here i want that to be a zero and then this one's going to be a two and that one's going to be a five so zero two five before i forget that let's just grab that in here zero two five that's the shape i'm going to use right so back to scale workshop i'm going to export this i'm going to call it um semaphore Nine, at 1982 because that's what it is and i'm going to that bad boy right there um moved it into the folder you didn't see that because that was off screen but if i go back to piano tech now in gala file of course it puts it on that screen for reasons unknown so yeah here's my tuning that i've just made so now we get to hear some different kind of flavor some already There you go i mean that kind of sounds like music you had a variety of chords there you had kind of like the major -y one and you had a kind of minor -y one and then you had this other one that's like whoa diminished -y something i don't know what it's doing but it sounds kind of um sounds kind of dark this thing here on that route 
see this degree that we're using here, you don't get a fifth, but you get this um, kind of slightly sharp 11th harmonic. That just sounds all kinds of um, kinds of wild. But yeah, it's a nice little technique, that, isn't it? So that's like, I've wanted to demonstrate this for so long because um, I use it all the time and I never had a word for it. So if anyone knows what this technique is actually called, then please let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to continue to call it um, Veraplaning. Veraplaning. Check that out. That's what I'm calling it. Because it's planing, but it's varied, right? Okay. So, hello, chat. I'm going to have a little scroll back and see how everyone's doing. Uh, hopefully well. Good to see familiar faces in here. User minus one saying, I think it's kind of interesting how minor nine is kind of the sound of a lot of D&B. Yeah, definitely. I use that so much as well. Okay, so I've got a question from uh, More Tisthine Rid. Hello, Sevish. I can't stop playing your track recently. By the way, is it possible to play with 53 Edo on piano tech with natural sound? It gets weird when you adjust the tuning to 110 hertz or something, something, something other hertz. Oh, that's really interesting that you asked that because I did actually mention this when, um, so if you're still here listening, because I know you said this about 20 minutes ago, but um, when you load up your tuning, this is the button you need. Right, let's, let's go from the beginning. You go onto your advanced tuning and then here, it, if it says string tension, then out at the extremes, it sounds really bad. But if you do full rebuild, that's what you want. So string tension means it's a normal sized piano, but your your strings, you're in 53 Edo, so your strings up here are going to be like too too loose, too like not tense enough. And your strings down here are just going to be like a bit too tight and your piano might explode. But if you do full rebuild, now you've got a piano that's like one mile wide and it's got all of the notes of 53 Edo. So that's what you're looking for. Uh, okay, so I'm still going back to chat. People saying so thankful to be here. That's a great reference there. Um, but yeah, now that I've now that you've heard this video, and then if you do um, go and listen to those, you'll you'll realise what what process uh, I did. Um, although, I don't know. We'll come back to that. There's a there's a little bit more that I can show you, um, but I'm still reading chat. Piano tech isn't. Do you like plasmonic? I don't know what um what plasmonic is. Um, so if if full build if uh, full rebuild didn't fix that issue, then I don't really know what it is. Sorry, but I think full rebuild just always fixes any issues that I have. Okay, so I said I was going to show you a little something else. So, um, and we were talking about Blackwood earlier. Let me switch over back into the the land of Blackwood. Although I'm loving the feeling. I'm loving the feelings from this one. Going to have to come back to this one day. Maybe not 19 equal, because 19 equal does sound a bit... Ah, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's all right. Ah, uh, just don't know. It doesn't grab me, 19. Uh, enough respect to 19. It's a very cool little thing, but the sound is a bit odd. Right, so I'm going to go back to... Blackwood. And I've got that one there, 15ED2. And let's get back to where we were. I had it kind of set up to give me like majors, like seventh chords. So here's the trick. I'm going to um, add another MIDI track. And then we're going to get the input. It's going to come from MIDI in. It's going to come from my multi-note device. So what's going to happen is, as I hit record, and I'm going to record something in, I don't know, it's, it, look, it's not going to be good, but I'm just going to record something and you're going to get to hear something rubbish. This is what always happens when you're sitting there by yourself and you just fiddle around, right? So I've just recorded in some nonsense. And then you can see I've this MIDI track where I've recorded out from multi-note. I now have, oh, 
oops, I need to, um, I've got a dual screen set up here. Let me flick it back on to single. See, um, what's the difference between large and small? I'm so confused. Let's go for that one. So yeah, I can now click in here and then you can see this thing. And I've, uh, I've recorded this out. From this, you actually want to do some further editing because if I leave it like that, you can see how all of the voices travel together in this kind of, um, uh, what do they call this? Some of you people are, your music theory people, right? Is this, um, is this homophony? Let me know. Cause I'm, I don't, I don't do the theory stuff that much. Um, but in any case, it could do with some interesting like voicings and things and different voicings would be great. I'm also just going to grab this from another track, pop that in there, over to track, uh, give you a more visual experience. So here we go, my piano roll is now a 10 note per octave piano roll. If you want to know how I did that, I've got a video on my channel called something about toenails color nice and bright so I can see what's going on there we have it so what you'd want to do at this point and I'm gonna actually uh, turn off that multi note and it's just copy piano tech up to here so what you would do after you've uh, used your multi note MIDI device whatever is you would then record that down and then you would be done with it because now you have some raw material to work from and now you can think about voicing stuff like that so uh, you might decide to take this um, and kind of put it down an octave. So I want to go down 10 steps. So that's 10. And you can hear something a bit different. I might want to take this fifth as well and put that down. And now we've got some voice leading going on because that um, that one now goes into that one. So that's a cool little thing, right? So I might take this bit here and I might put that up. And like, this is how you start writing a track with veriplaning. So it's a very easy way. As long as you like can grab um, microtonal chip, like remember, let's recap. The basics are you one, you need to have some kind of MIDI effect that gives you a chord. Two, you need to grab a Scala file or some tuning file that you can load into your synthesizer, right? But, uh, and you can grab like presets from online. You just search for Scala file presets and you just flick through them um, and just like try and find the one that sounds good. And this is how you use veriplaning to very quickly come up with a track. Um, so yeah, then I can kind of delete my erroneous playing and um, start moving some stuff around. And uh, should I move that down? Bit, probably a bit tight to have that down there. I'm just going to leave it in there. Let's see how it sounds. Yep, that's all good so far. And I might move this bit up. That's cool. I sometimes like having these kind of close together voices. That just sounds nice. Got, you've got instant um, instant savage track there. See what I mean? There you go. That's it. That's the trick. There's not much more I can say. I'm just like really glad I can finally get it out there because I used it all the time. And for years and years, I was thinking, oh yeah, there's that thing I do, and I don't know if anyone does it. What's it called? I don't know what it's called. So like, this is the video. I'm going to point people and say, watch this. Um, right, back to back to chat because I don't want to leave you all hanging. Oh, so, so yeah, there was a question I got earlier on. Do I like plasmonic? It's a VST synth. I've honestly, I've never heard of it, so I don't have an opinion on it. And I'm very limited because I'm on I'm on Linux, so I don't know if it's available. 
What else have we got? People talking about their favourite service tracks. That's uh, very wholesome. Okay, got, someone's come up with a question. Silver Gold says, question, I have been getting into just intonation. Sounds fun. I come from a background in program design. Are there user-friendly tools for working in just intonation already? Something I've wanted to make. It's a very open-ended question because it's a very open-ended intonation. Because um, just intonation means a lot of things. I mean, if you're willing to work with smaller um, just intonation scales where like you pick, um, pick 12 notes, let's say, and then you can do the method that I've shown on this video where you can load them up into some software like I've done. Uh, there's free ones, like if you're looking for a free synthesizer, just great for tuning. It's got some really nice sounds in it called Surge XT. That's the one. There are loads of others that are really good. So like everyone's got their favorite and that's part of the fun. But just looking for something to quickly, yeah, Surge XT. And... Um, but, you know, there are other approaches to just intonation. If you want to write, um, like you want to have access to every single ratio that exists, yeah, there's quite a few of them I've counted, um, then I've got no clue. <laughs> uh, there's there's got to be a way of doing it, but it's beyond me. I, I like to work with smaller sets of pitches. Got an interesting comment here. I think 17, 19, 24, 31 equal has some uncanny valley effect. Yeah, I can get that. I, I get the uncanny, va uncanny valley with 19. Um, and But 17, 31, they just, they sound perfectly normal to me. And then 24, I, uh, I do struggle with 24. I think it's not a beginner's tuning at all. It's like really difficult to use the resources of 24 it's so difficult but of course you know you're working with musicians you're writing music for performance something like 24 is really good because it's easy for performers to understand but i think like if you're coming from my perspective you know we used to go out for a drive and we used to park in tesco car park and the boys would all bring out their uh cdrs that they've burned and we would be playing our tracks that we made in fl studio and um if you're coming from my background yeah then um, 24 is just not the way to get started. Go for something else, honestly. Uh, sorry, I'm just catching up with chat. So apparently, you can also do this in Reaper. Oh, user minus one is talking about the uh, the guide notes. So in the background, I've got my MIDI thing. You can do that in Reaper. So check out user minus one's tutorial on that on his uh, YouTube. Ben, your mind saying, dropping some knowledge here, 12 EDO performs 12 tone music best up until a very high number, like 53 or something. That's why emulation with lower numbers will always be a bit uncanny. Best to make new music with lower EDOs. Yeah, I think that's pretty good advice. Definitely. And yeah, it's, it's worth mentioning that 12 EDO is really good at doing the 12 EDO stuff. Like that is hands down one of the best tunings I've ever heard, 12. So um, there's really good stuff you can do with it. And it's all about like, no, it's all about just like, don't take tuning for granted. Just um, when you want to do something that sounds a bit jazzy or whatever, just use 12. That's, you, you're never going to go wrong. So that's just a bit of advice. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Do, Do to Matur says, so I don't know how to pronounce that, reminds me of Zero Nothings. Yeah, so Zero Nothings was another one of the ones that, um, that's the recent track I did, wasn't it? And that also uses veroplaning. But you see the technique. I did this technique as well, where I recorded the chords down, and then I went in and I changed the voicings, and I also changed some of the velocities and all that stuff. Um, so it's a good thing to do. How's Rocco doing? Um, Rocco's a bit um, concerned at the moment because um, his, the, the other owner has just left to go abroad for a week. So Rocco is a bit nervous. I'm looking after him. He'll be fine after a couple of days. We'll get used to it. Me and him will be good. 
Um, after this call, I'm going to go out into the garden, lovely weather, get myself a fresh glass of water. I'm going to throw the ball. He can run after the ball. A very fast dog. Got great muscles on his back legs. Very fit dog. He's a little bit fat though, but he does like to run. Okay, what VSTs do you currently use? Let's go in. And have a look. Got um, kind of a bit different. I've got loads of VSTs in here. So those are my Bitwig ones. What else do we have? I'm using Carla, so if I need to bridge some plugins, that's bridging. I've got Drum Gizmo. I'm going to use that on a future project. It's the next project that I'm working on. When I say next, you're probably thinking the album I'm about to drop. No, that's my current project. Next one, I'm going to use Drum Gizmo a bit. Um, Surge or Surge XT. Yeah, you want to grab that. Tau Dub 3. This is like my love this for love this for delays and stuff. Why didn't it go on there? Oh man, my uh, my interface has changed and I'm not really used to it. Is it why is that open? Can I move? Oh man, Bitwig. Bitwig four. I'm used to Bitwig three, so I'm on Bitwig four now. Uh but yeah, if I this this thingy here over here. Get that going. Oh wait, no, not Tau Dub three. No, this is this is the free one. No, forget that. No, no, no. Uh, Tau Dub X. That's the bad boy. Where is it? In this list. It's just um. What's going on? Oh, it's called Lib Tau now, isn't it? Lib Tau. Yeah, I love that. This is my default setup where I've just got just enough drive so that you just hear that kind of getting distorted at the end and a bit of a bit of filtering and that. Um, what other plugins do I like? Uh, some stuff. Decent sampler I've got now. It's a cool little thing. Air Windows. Check out Air Windows. That guy makes loads of stuff. I always use his AD clip. I use his auto pan. I use some of his reverbs, although I'm now recently I'm just using Convolution. MV is a very interesting reverb. Um, I use that on Starfish. Sounds really weird. Some other cool things. To tape, I use the tape stuff sometimes if I want to get um, some more low end into something, if I want something to get more low sounds. I put the tape thing on there and I crank up the um, one of the things like makes it bassy. Dexed. I've just done a track in Dexed and it's like a FM7. Um, what else am I using? There's a free, e, free electric piano here called EPMK1. I don't use it anymore because I've got Piano Tech and it's a bit more featureful. Um, what else have I got? Got Luffs meter. Got to get your Luffs meter. Put that on there. Tells you how loud all your stuff is. That's good. That's a nice one. Xenos. I've got Xenos people. You've never seen Xenos? What? It loads up tunings. I don't know how it works. It's a it's this a mysterious box of crazy goodness. But if you check out Xenos, it does some weird stuff. But you can put tunings in there and it does all this weird How do I load a scale in? Has it got five equal? Because that'd be a really good example. Custom load. Where's five equal? Let's try this one. So this is a, such a weird little thing. I'm only playing one note. found a use for it yet. 
I've just got it, but I've never used it. Um, yeah, I've got some. You know, my my plugin selection is not that amazing. Piano Tech, uh, Tau Sampler. I use Tau Sampler a lot. Um, there's not much more to say. Is this the one? Yeah, I use Tau Sampler all the time. I've started using Decent Sampler a little bit. Um, Surge, Vital. That's pretty much it. Not much else going on. Oh yeah, Tau DAC. I use Tau DAC sometimes to get a bit of uh, get my crunch on. It does all kinds of crunchy sounds. You've got some lo-fi sounds. You've got some classic samplers in there. You've got the Emu Two. You've got the Am Sixty. Never used these in my life, but they're on all of your favourite records. That's a cool one. You've got a little dry wet on there as well, so that's a nice thing to have. Just dirty your sound up a bit. Um, yeah. So we've got a question from user minus one. Random question I have is what tunings are you interested in trying that you've never used before? Um, uh, I'm interested in doing Bolan Pierce Lambda because I've used Bolan Pierce as 13 ED3 with all of the resources that are available, but I've never limited myself to the Lambda scale. So I want to try that at some point, but what I'm going to do, my my aim is to do Lambda in 22 E though, because it actually tempers out the same commas. Now that's not going to be as in tune, but I'm planning on doing a 22 Edo project that kind of pushes the boundaries of 22. So I think doing a track in, in Lambda, the Lambda scale would be pretty cool. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm trying to think any other ones. That I'm interested in trying that I've never used before. Can't remember. I mean, there's a, there's a there's a couple of new tunings that are going to be on my next album that I've like been exploring, but um, we'll get to that later on. Um, I can't think of anything. So if anyone's got any suggestions of tunings, just like send them my way because I do occasionally like to um, check out a tuning every now and then. Uh, would you be willing to show so another question? Would you be willing to show us a random unfinished track that you've made? Maybe something weird that you've never bothered to finish. Um, um, no. Sure, because I might end up finishing. I don't think I have an example at the moment. Actually. Um, already been in the dustbin. Wait, I can't show anything today. I have a think about it. Maybe I'll do one on another stream. So what else we got? Sound wise, EDO is not a good option in terms of the quality of harmony, but it can be played with in very different ways. That's why it's so fun. Yeah, I agree with that. I think. Uh, question, do you use physical modeling synths? You know, the only physical modeling synth I've got is um, Piano Tech and the other one, that EP. They're both kind of piano-ish kind of things. Not really done a lot with um, physical modeling. Might be something I'll look at in the future. I don't really know where to start. I know you can do some stuff with Surge because it has some kind of um, comb filters and things like that that you can get um, like sympathetic resonance. So yeah, apparently Serum is very good for microtonal tuning as well. People suggesting tunings at me now. Okay, 311. I don't really know where to begin with that. It sounds like a nightmare. Like if there's a small subset, then yeah, I could use 311. But very often, if I'm going to do a small subset, I'll just use um, like just intonation, or I'll just make something up. I could try 311. It's kind of like saying, paint paint a picture. What color should I use? Oh, um, the rainbow. It's just a bit too fine by that point. I need some 41 though. 41 EDO. Um, 
Yeah, that could be interesting. That's kind of, it is possible because I've done a track in 53. So, um, so I could do a track in 41. Mark. I know a little bit about it because I've heard about the kite guitar. It's that guitar that 41. 159. Yeah, I've heard a lot about 559, but I don't really. Um... Oh, because it's triple 53. I don't know what I would want with that amount of resolution, though. Only if I was working with um, subset. 69 again. I think 53 was my absolute limit. I can't be bothered to go any higher than 53 in terms of having the whole tuning available to me because you come up against the limits of MIDI. And I know there's workarounds, but I like to keep it a bit simple. 34? Yeah, that's something I could try. Um, what do I do with it? I don't really know what it's good for. Oh, it's double 17. I'm expecting it probably has more thirds. Probably got about five or six different thirds in it. Probably got a decent fifth. Yeah, that could be an interesting one. I think, right, yeah, so to go back to the early question, what tunings would I use that I haven't tried? It would be the kind of medium sized EDOs. I know people have their own it's subjective, isn't it? People have their own, you know, what's a medium EDO, what's a high EDO. But for me, the medium ones are like 20s, 30s. Is medium to me anything less than 22 is small there's not 22 is not that many notes i'm only using 22 as the boundary because i i use it so often um but yeah that's that's what i would use more medium um edos probably um it would be my dream come true to see you demo your gleam master tracks um I could probably do that at some point. Uh, it's on an old computer because it's from years ago. So, and it's quite difficult for me to get on that machine. But it's, I could possibly get the stems for that at some point. I don't know if anyone wants to remix it or something. Okay. You should do more with 14. Oh, yeah, yeah I agree. I should do more with 14. 53 doesn't have a neutral third, really. Surprises me. I would have thought it has a couple of neutral thirds. Uh, 27. Yeah, I've not tried 27. Um, but that could be cool. 35. I was interested in 35 a little while ago, on a, just on a theory level, because it's 5 times 7. But when I actually tried it, I was like, do I really need to be writing this in 35? I'm just not that I'm just not that bored. Try that one yet. Might happen one. So try 270 someday if you want some really high accuracy. That just sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for the suggestion. It's too much for me, I think. User minus one wants to hear some medium EDO. The funniest conversation I heard in the Zen Harmonic Alliance Discord, no offense um, to anyone, I just thought it was the most dumb conversation ever. But it was, um, what, what is the limit at which an EDO is, what's the word? Super big or something. <laughs> I remember that one raging on for a couple of days. Just no, it doesn't need to happen. Is 19 small? I think 19 is pretty small, like in my opinion. Um, but, you know, we all draw the line in a different place, right? So I think 19 is pretty small. Um, oh, I think I've pretty much caught up with chat. Loud Paul. Hello, Loud Paul. Stems would be great even just for the sake of muting the drum track and playing along with the synth. Oh, yeah. I mean, the MIDI parts are available online, but... You know, you want to hear the original parts, right? So I don't really know what. Uh... It would be difficult for me to, to get that at the moment. It would take me a couple of hours in order to get that up and running. Definitely. It's 
So do you want to hear about my next project? So um, I'm going to release an album at some point and I'm um, still working on it, but I've got like seven tracks finished and I've got one more track left to do. Um, it's called Big Sway. And the tagline is, hang on, let me remember. High energy electronic mind candy. How does that sound? That's what I'm going for. The, the inspir not the inspiration, but the goal of the album was to, to create a cohesive experience of upbeat um, electronic music, that the kind of stuff that I'd like to play when I'm out driving. So that's what I've been working on. Um, that's almost done. I'm looking forward to getting that done because there's another project I want to work on later on, which is um, it's going to be a kind of fusion. There you go. I'm working very hard, but I've also got a day job, right? So, um, you know, that obviously takes up a lot of my time. And um, as I've got plenty of other stuff going on. So it's amazing that I can honestly get an album done each, uh, each year. Is Big Sway the opposite of Big Num? No, but Sway is um, Sway is an old English word which means noise or music, something like that. And it's also a movement that you make. So it could take whatever meaning you want from it. I thought it was just kind of ambiguous enough. I like these uh, track names that something, some stuff. I'm just trying to read things. Tasty, candy, emoji, lollipop, orange heart. Thanks for that. Rabbit wanter. Do you, do you want rabbits? Curious. Um, Henrik, thanks. Another question. Would you like to try 28 someday? Yeah, actually, that's a really good suggestion. It has the same 6 over 5 as 12 Edo, but it has a really nice 5 over Four. Um, six over five again. Oh yeah, minor third. Uh, and a nice major third. Oh yeah, cool. And it has, obviously it's got your neutrals as well, so that's cool. Um, yeah, 28. I would like to, to try 28. It, it's likely that I try that one. Um, yeah. Oh, have I got my list? I'm not, I'm not showing the tunings. Um, yeah. So in my next album, how many? One, two, three, four. Okay, so four of the tracks are tunings that I've never used before. That's the next album that you're going to get, Big Sway. The other four tracks are tunings that I have used before. Are we going to do a listening party then? Does anyone fancy joining that? Because... um. We usually do this for um, for my album release on on YouTube, and I put together a little thing, and um, I'll just yeah, I'll just do like a really simple visualization. I'm not going to go overboard, but I'll I'll put together a little thing, and then we can listen together. Um, but if we do that, I just want you to know that I've already released two singles, so you've actually heard two singles from the album. So when you're in the listening party, there'll be stuff there that you already know. They're like, well, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. You know, I'm just trying to experiment a little bit. Where's my tab? I've lost my tab. So the other thing about 28 is that it has whitewood. Now, to bring this back to veroplaning, um, I didn't put whitewood on this list, and there's a reason why. It's because it doesn't veroplane in the way that I would want it to. Okay, I'm not going to do it on this video, but you can try it for yourself and try to veroplane Whitewood. You can use, for example, 21 equal, or you can use 28 equal. How do I spell D? Okay, um, whatever you like, 
but it doesn't fare a plane between the major and the minor chords. Like you get that in Blackwood where you get major and minor, but in Whitewood you don't. I'll leave it as an exercise to all of you to figure out why that happens. Uh, okay, back to the old Chattington chat chat. I do want rabbits. My dream is to have a bunny farm and do magic tricks with orange heart, orange heart rabbit. You have a dream that stays in your head. Do you know, yesterday I... I um. I'll come back to your question. Yesterday I had a dream about a cat. I'm actually getting a cat soon. Um, it will be two weeks from today. A little cat, a little girl, a little kitten. Um, a cal calico coloured. It's mainly mainly black with a little bit of white and a little bit of orangey orange bits. Um, I d I've never had a cat before. They poo in the house. Does anyone like cats? They poo in the house. At least dogs go outside. Right, um, I would join listening party. Yeah, so yeah, back to the listening party. Yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do that. I'll get it to I'll get all of my act together. Um, so yeah, I will. There will be enough advance. It's gonna be sometime on like a weekend kind of day at some point. I'm I'm hoping to get the album out this year. I think it's doable because like, I I want to finish it. I want to write the next one. Because I have to write the next one because I need to finish the one after that. All kinds of ideas going on. I just don't have the time. Um, with Whitewood, you can fare a plane. Thanks, user minus one, for engaging with the topic here. Uh, you can fare a plane between the major third and the minor third and the major second. Yes, exactly. You can do that. Or you can have the major third and the um, other thing. Both? Something. Yeah. No. Or the Yeah. But if you try to if you try to go in between the minor third and the major third so that you can get both, it doesn't work because you always get a neutral third. And then you're not veriplaning, then you're just planing. And you can do that anyway. Oh Project twenty one hundred. Yeah, really glad to hear what you just said there. And you say, I don't really mind if some tracks are already known. I personally enjoy them because of the company. That's great. That's some wholesome stuff there. Same for you, 23 in Roman numerals. At 23? Okay, what else have we got? Kittens are the best. Oh. Rocco is just an absolute terror when he was a puppy. He was a little tornado. You could fare a plane between 15, 18, 20 and 9, 10, 12. Yeah, I'll have to give that a try. So maybe, uh, maybe I've been unkind to Whitewood. It's just that I really wanted to do the Blackwood thing with it. Um, I couldn't. And I thought maybe there's a way of doing it. If there was a way that I could get. Let's say you want to fare a plane. Well, you can't. It's not possible. But is there another way of pressing one button? In, um, in Whitewood 14 and getting either a major or a minor chord depending on your route that you played on and multi-note. So my idea was like this. So if I were to have layers where I had a layer here and this one was like, I don't know what the degrees are. I'm just guessing here for, for Whitewood, but I'm guessing it's like 038 for the minor. And if this one was like 058 for the major, and then if there was a way, this is the bit that I'm missing, if there was a way so that on an even MIDI note number, it goes through this layer, and on an odd MIDI note number, it goes through that layer. But I don't know how to do it in Bitwig. So if anyone is a Bitwig um, expert, then I would like to, um, I would like to raise my skills to the next level, and you can help me do that, or you, or we could help each other. So, just a little, uh, little thing. Question from um, Romeo's. Question: What MIDI controllers do you use? Have you considered getting a Lumitone? Um, no, I'm not getting a Lumitone. Uh, I've got a, I've got an Axis Forty Nine, so that's quite similar to a Lumitone. So that's what I've been using today. 
It's an isomorphic keyboard controller. It's got the hexagons on it. That's what I've been using today to demo earlier on. I've got um, I've got two um, M Audio key stations. I've got the 88 key where I have rearranged the keys into a 22 uh, tone layout, so I can actually play. Well, it's technically an 11 tone layout, so I can play music in any 11 note or 22 note scale, and it just um, pretty easy to work with. I'm also working with uh, working on my other M Audio key station at the moment. It's the 60. How many keys do they have? Is it 61 or is it 64? I want to say 61. Um, and I'm doing a 10 note per Equwave layout. So um, it's going to have seven white keys and then it's going to have three black keys. So those are my MIDI controllers. Oh, okay. We get, I'm sorry, yeah, Henrik, you're giving me some um, Whitewood knowledge here, which is like really particularly interesting to me because Whitewood is at the peak of want to try and never tried, I think. Probably need to do Whitewood at some point. Um, so you're saying, I think Whitewood is better for either pentatonic or decatonic something scales than heptatonic. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, seven equal think is like one of the best heptatonic scales ever um so you, it does have that blackwood you can use for heptatonic if you use several tilted five edo scales yeah i've never tried heptatonic in blackwood but i've just used all 10 uh 23 yeah you're very um very welcome to uh come in and hang out and chat uh thanks i'm uh, glad you like the music Sixty or sixty-one. Thanks, Lift. Hey, Lift. Good to see you. Catching up with chat. I should probably have like chat on the screen or something. We're looking at this. There's like nothing here. Woo! There you go. Um, I just found out about your music. Hello, forty-seven. Yo, I just found out about your music this week. Uh, didn't even know you stream. It will be interesting to see the inner workings. Wish Ziana would would do this as well. I think Ziana does. I think she does all kinds of streams and stuff like that. So, um, on one of her channels or something, I'm pretty sure. And like, I don't stream that often. It's so stressful streaming because I've got to get all my setup and I've got to make sure all of this cables are all in the right place. Look at all this nonsense you've got to do just to stream. And then, um, yeah, it's a, it's a stressful thing. I get very thirsty as well. On a stream. Would you ever try a ternary scale? A scale with three step sizes asks you user minus one. Um, why would I do that? Why would I use a scale with three step sizes? Maybe if the equave was quite small. But I mean, Blackwood has two step sizes. Oh, are you talking? Oh, step sizes. Okay, so it, I thought you meant um, like three three notes per octave. I'm thinking like there's not a lot of music that I can write with that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, would you try a, a ternary scale? Yeah, I think I've done that before. I'm pretty sure I've done a few like that. Why not? Could be wrong. Um, I know that Jackie Ligon and Margot Schulter um, have an interest in scales where there are large steps and small st steps. Oh, wait. Scales where there are a bunch of steps, but then there's this one other interval, just one, that's its own category, it's its own size. I think Jackie called that trivalent. Trivalent scales. I don't know if that's a thing. I'm just, I'm just kind of riffing off of stuff that I barely remember. So, yeah. I don't know. I would try. Um, I would try a lot of things. Like I'm fairly open-minded, but uh, I 
there's a lot of material to do. Just so many scales. It's okay. I have to go around. If I don't write the white wood banger, someone will do it. Could be you. Listening here. You don't know until you try. So this is it's a good hobby to have. Let's just keep it about the music. Like, just try and make people feel good with the music. And, um, and the scales is just a little thing on the side, right? Because like this, at the end of the day, I'm just interested in feeling something from the music. So as someone that makes music, um, there are all these parameters in the music that you tweak to get that expression to like finely hone your expression and tuning is one of those parameters anyway i'm going off on a tangent at the moment um question is is there anyone you're planning to collab with anytime soon yeah there's a couple of collab projects in the work but i'm like really bad with collabs. not very good at um I'm not very good at the thing. How do you get how do you get uh, the, the chat? How do you get chat up on this thing? Does anyone stream? Not very good at um There you go. Now you can look at now you can look at yourself. I'm watching you and you're watching me. Um Oh yeah, I'm really bad at collabs. So um there are collabs happening, yes. I'm trying to make it happen, but why not rearrange a piano keyboard into a consistent black white? It seems like it would fit in with most tunings. Yeah, it would work very well for a lot. But um I wanted something that has more irregularity. This is a topic that came up on Facebook. You know the Zen Harmonic Alliance group on Facebook. There was a discussion about um, isomorphic keyboard controllers. Like, yeah, it's the thing. And um, but like a couple of us were like, well, actually, uh, the old school keyboards are great because you know where you are. You don't have to look at the thing. You know why Lumitone's got all those lights on it. You get lost if you weren't looking at it. There's nothing else to let you know where you are. It's just a grid. I don't mean, I'm not saying it's bad. It's like, it's an amazing instrument. I've got an isomorphic keyboard controller myself. I've had it for like 10 years. That's why I know I actually prefer the old school keyboards that had different numbers of black notes here, there, and everywhere. Um, so I wouldn't do the alternating black, white, black, white, black, white. Black. I wouldn't bother with that. It could be an interesting thing to play with. But I like to have some shape there that, that guides you M musical there are ternary step oh chat's just scrolled up hang on these scales have only three single step sizes only three double step sizes only oh, i was a bit confused by that one sorry but um, yeah, I think I think did I skip something? Oh, here. Is there a difference between Zen harmonics and microtones? I'm just getting into this whole space. Oh my god, I could. Um, I'm having such kind of disagreement with the the, the categories that exist. Um, it's kind of been on my mind for quite a few years, but. The common, the common definition of microtonal is just uses tunings that have a, the um, the step sizes are smaller than a, a semitone, and sometimes that gets extended. So it could be well, it could be smaller or bigger than a semitone, but they have to be the in, the size of the interval has to be kind of somewhere in between, so that it's not twelve equal. Um, I've got I've got big problems with that because I don't see why twelve equal should be excluded from all of those tunings for various reasons. Um, but that's 
you know, that's a definition of microtonal that you can work with. You can just say like it uses a tuning system that's not 12 equal. Most people regard that as microtonal. Some of us are starting to say 12 equal is a microtonal scale and microtonal is all about having a, not taking the tunings for granted. And it's about um, purposefully using those tunings to get at a certain thing that you want to get at. Like I said earlier on, you want your music to sound jazzy. 12 equal is pretty good at that. Um, so what's Zen, what Zen harmonic? Zen harmonic was coined by Ivor Darag. And he said that it's, just a paraphrase, it's, um, it's tunings that um, they don't sound like 12. So it's not merely that different from 12 in some way, it's that they actually don't sound like 12. And um, obviously that's a subjective thing, but um, it's the, the Zen harmonic perspective is Tunings give different moods. If I want a certain mood, I can go for a certain tuning. If I use a tuning that's not been used in any traditional music or any recorded music history, then it may contain new moods. So why don't we expand the kind of palette of different sounds? So what's an example of a scale that is Zen harmonic, but it's not microtonal? take for example quarter comma mean tone or any other kind of mean tone so these kind of tunings were used uh, in Europe a few hundred years ago oh they still get used but um, they were quite common a few hundred years ago and um, but like you could play a, a piece in C major and it's not that different so I wouldn't call that Zen harmonic but I would call it microtonal but again if you're a newcomer to this, I'm trying to give you the descriptions that are widely accepted as true. But if you want to know my opinion, I don't think microtone, I don't, I don't want to use the word, it's just the word. It's just the word that everybody knows. And so you have to say microtonal, but that I don't want to exclude 12. I'm not excluding 12 because I love it. I listen to that music all the time. One of my favorite tunings. So I'm, I'm, it's, on some level, I'm kind of done with the, the description of microtonal. I hope that helped clear some things up. Hello, everyone. Most... Ah, oh, see, this thing's annoying because it keeps on scrolling, so I'm going to leave that one there, but I'm going to look at my other one over here. Okay. So, um... I've mostly tried out scales in MTX and a little bit of Scala with not very good sound fonts. Yeah, um, yeah, you can use, see, I've not heard of MTX, but if you try something like Surge XT, there's some really good presets in there, some like really well, well made musical presets. And if you just, I don't know if you have a little MIDI controller or something, but even if you don't, like you can get some really good sounds out of that. You could start small by just like recording a little little thing. You've got to start somewhere, right? And eventually you'll, you'll be more and more happy with the, the music you're able to record. As long as you're enjoying it, I think uh, it's a great hobby to get into. 23 saying, I just looked up the Axis 49. I can't find any online available to buy. It looks like it would be hard to get my hands on. It would be hard, yeah. They stopped making them a few years ago. I don't know if there's any company that do anything similar. Um, I got mine for four hundred pounds back in twenty eleven, twenty ten. I can't remember. And pound two hundred. It was something about that, but it would probably cost the same if I sold it today. I don't think it's lost any value. Seems like it would be nice to have an extra axis, but a longer learning curve too. Oh yeah, the instrument seems really nice. That's something I would and having do you know what i'd like to have is a ribbon controller i've been looking at the um at ribbon controller and thinking that would be such a cool thing so maybe one day since we're asking questions what video game music inspires you i'm asking because i think video game music has a really special quality to it okay um i like um i love uh sega mega drive because i love the the sound of it is so raw and um, crunchy. It's 
really nice sound. And then I also like um, some of the PlayStation stuff. So what inspires me? I mean, in terms of the PlayStation stuff, there was a kind of thing happening because it was the mid nineties. Hey, Robert. It was the mid nineties, and um, like electronic music was having a big boom, um, and uh, there was some cool sound and stuff. And that stuff still inspires me. Like a lot of my music, just sound it still sounds like a nineties throwback. You wait until you hear the new album. You're just gonna you will know exactly what I'm talking about because it's all that. And what music in general ins inspires you, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I listen to a few different things. Um, my music taste is not that great. But on my Discord channel, I have got... Um, what have I got? There's a channel on my Discord channel, on my Discord server called um, Listening To. So you can... Um, I don't know if you're on the Discord. I don't know what the link is for the Discord. Is it, on the, um, is it in the description? Yeah, there it is in the description there. And then I, I post some stuff in there. So if you can search for my username and then you'll see what kind of stuff I post in there. So there's, you know, some good tunes. I, I think it's safe to say that I listen to and a lot of rubbish. I do listen to some crap and I, uh, I sometimes post that in the, uh, in the channel. So you make your own judgment on that. I don't really care. I just, I like what I like. <laughs> um, I've lost the chat, but I don't want to lose anyone since we're having a little conversation here. I think the thing scrolled up again. Any experience with Marcus Hobbs' Wilsonic software as a generator librarian using Irvin Wilson's theoretical tuning structures? Hello, Billsy Bainbridge. Thank you for your question. Uh, yeah, I, um, I've seen some videos of it, and I think it looks like an amazing little tool. That is such a cool tool. If you want to get into any of Irv Wilson's structures um that's the one to go for um there's no linux build yet i don't know if there will be but he's got it working on mac and windows but i think it's a big ask to ask um marcus to do that on linux so i'm not putting any pressure on him he's you know needs to spend his time wisely oh i've not fed the dog i need to feed him soon he's really annoyed um so yeah uh I'd love to try it out though. I do recommend it. That's called Will Sonic. Henrik saying Zen harmonic sounds different from 12 EDO. People say microtonal has smaller tones than the semitone. There are other tunings that sound more in tune than 12 EDO. Terminology is not perfect. Yeah. Uh, Tristan, hey Tristan Bay, good to see you. I essentially define microtonal as not being 12 EDO and Zen harmonic as not having the same form as 12 EDO. Yeah, fair enough. That's quite similar to what a lot of people would say. Uh, tunism. In my own head, I call it tunism, which is, um, or I would say like I am a tunist, as in I appreciate tunings. I don't take tunings for granted. I use a tuning when I want that tuning. If I write in 12, then um, that's not microtonal, but it's still tunism to me. If I was born in um, Turkey or Syria or something like that, let's say I was born in Turkey and I learned whatever music they taught me in school, I uh, play Barlama or something, and and um, I never bothered to learn about uh, Persian intonation, I never bothered to learn about uh, Egyptian intonation or Indonesian or European, um, but I just stayed within my own thing, and I just learned the intonation that my teacher told me at school. You could say, yes, that is microtonal, but it's not tunism. Anyway, that's the little thing that I have in my own head, but I've invented enough um, nonsense. So I don't expect anyone to um, to take me up on that, but I call myself a tunist, I guess. I'm gonna have to skip through some of these because um, I I need to catch up a bit. Greek and Arabic genera makamat sound pretty much zen harmonic to us. Yeah, I probably agree with that. Although they don't they don't sound zen harmonic, but they they. It sound a bit familiar as kind of additional scales. If you've heard a bunch of music in those scales, like I have. Um, could you, you could argue that things like 7 EDO can be some kind of scale or mode or proper microtonal tuning, like 21 EDO as an example. Yep, I think you could argue that, yep. Okay, what other questions? The thing scrolled again. How many desktop monitors do you have too? 
Henrik saying, I agree, 12 EDO should not be excluded. It's a regular scale and a form of mint temperament. Oh yeah, yeah, there, there are like temperament approaches to 12 equal that are worth exploring for people who don't want to be microtonal, but are looking for the new thing within their current tuning system. Um, right, bear with me for just a minute. I'll be back in just like one minute. Right, what we're we talking about, I'm still about five minutes behind on chat, so we've got a bit of a loop happening, a bit of a delay going on. Oh yeah, lift pizzas, yeah, this is exactly, yeah, I agree. You're saying, um, in the end, the meaning slash terminology should be good at communicating something that is relevant slash of value. And what is relevant to me is not that something is 12 EDO, I don't care that 12 equal, 12 equal is the dominant tuning in the West or increasingly elsewhere. I literally do not care. I think it's a great tuning anyway. Um, I just, for myself, I'm not interested in writing in 12. I'm interested in listening to a lot of 12, but I'm not interested in writing in it. But, you know, so microtonal doesn't impart anything of value to me. Not anymore, anyway. My opinion on this changes, so. I'll probably change again. <laughs> a bit of discussion happening about macrotonal. That's the other fun one is because people say, oh, there's a microtonal. Is there a macrotonal? Yeah, I guess so. It doesn't, that word doesn't get used a lot, but I'll say that, I'm sure. 12 needs to be more loved in this community. That's it. We'll, one, one of these days, we'll have to do a live stream about 12. And we'll have to like do all of the weird temperament stuff in 12 that no um, composers ever use. <laughs> it's, apparently it does Pajara temperament. I don't know if any music use, is in Pajara in 12 equal. There's a few others as well. Um, Compton temperament. Oh, right, I'm not going to do any more music on this. At this point, I'm just like trying to do chat. We've already done the music segment. So Wave Morpher, thank you for your question. Um, I have, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I've done my bit. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. But if you've missed the beginning, then, then go back and watch it. Uh, Feed Rocco, yes, I went to Feed Rocco. Tunism, yep. Sorry, catching up with chat. I'm somewhere up here. I don't know where I am. Dilsey Bainbridge says it would be an interesting experiment to try dynamic functional tuning whereby the intervallic chordal slash modal change depending on the chord progression. For example, a five chord is a different scale. Uh, yeah, dynamic tunings is not something I've gotten into yet, and I might at some point do that. Certainly, it's 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 somewhere it's something that other people can like try. There's like that's a wide open frontier. So if you're looking for the the new angle in microtonal, then yeah, dynamic tunings, dynamic functional tuning you mentioned specifically. Um, yeah, you can do that. Right, so people then started just spamming random crap, so that was good because I could catch up a bit easier. Did Rocco Dog food feed? Yep, fed him, fed. Tuning freedom community better than <laughs> tuning freedom. <laughs> So anyway, I've pretty much caught up with chat. I hope you're all well. So you've had, let me recap, you've had fair planing. Um, uh, and then um, you've had the, the news about the pets, but we've had a good chat about um, all your questions. And the new album is Big Sway. And the oh, I've, done a, I've done a cover art. It's got like fractal in it. It's got like... Um, reflective water you know it's the same fractal that's in harmony hacker but a different color and then it's got um the same l similar landscape that's in ancient love 
Yeah. And then it's got the same water as in all of my other stuff. And then it's got the same, um, it's got some like some spheres in there, some like reflective spheres. You'll, you know, you get to see that. Uh, yeah. Thanks everyone for joining me. Um, I hope it didn't get too chaotic at the end. Uh, I'm just happy to share a bit of knowledge today. Uh, everyone have a good day. I'm signing off. Uh,